is livid or they're stitched a lot, they're likely a rage baiter or participating in rage baiting. Another good example is Jess Pearly things. She's the girl that once again says like, you know, if you're not married by 25, then you're worthless and your body's worn out. Things like that. That's a lot of what you're going to see with rage baiting. The number one typical reason for rage baiting is money. But I've noticed a lot of people in the rage baiting field are people that are obsessed with attention. Tension. 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 In the morning, pop shells, for a living in Barry, gon' smell blood trail every minute. Rogue wave, and you niggas no fair when I hit him. Hope everybody's having a great day or a great night. Before we dive into this content, it's important to note that these videos will primarily focus on TikTok. In the future, I plan to cover other platforms as well. Now, in this video, I'm addressing a topic that has been weighing on my mind recently. It's about the content we consume online and how it can affect our emotions. Specifically, I want to talk about something called rage bait. It all started when I noticed myself getting increasingly upset and emotional after seeing certain types of content. I couldn't understand why I was reacting so strongly. So I started to dig a little deeper. You know, I started getting all on the internet. And that's when I came across the term called engagement bait. Now, engagement bait is a strategy used by content creators to provoke an emotional response from their audience in order to get, you know, generate engagement and all that stuff. It's a way of manipulating people into clicking, sharing, and commenting on their content, even if it's not necessarily high quality or informative. My car payment is $1,400 a month. My interest is 10%, like I said in my original video. I have a 84 month term, something like that, I think. And yes, I purchased my car, financed it for $84,000, and I still owe seventy-four, almost $75,000. Like I said, none of that was lies. So as you can see right here, $1,400, $1,437.70 to be exact every month. Not a lie. And again, amount financed, $84,000. Principal balance, currently $74,000. 10% APR. I don't know why you guys think I would lie about all this. This is all true. Like, this is my life. This is what happened, what is happening, and what I am done with. Classic examples of engagement bait include clickbait headlines. Now, these are headlines that are designed to be sensational, attention grabbing, but they don't often reflect accurately on the content of the article, which we see all the time online. Like, click this to find this. And then there's emotional appeals. This type of content is designed to evoke a strong emotional response, such as anger, fear, or sadness. It's often used to promote products or political agendas. Then there's outrageous claims. These are claims that are so outlandish that they are difficult to believe, but they're often presented as they are true. The problem with engagement bait is that it has a negative effect on our mental and emotional well-being. When we're constantly bombarded with content that is designed to make us angry, scared, or sad, it could take a toll on our mood and overall outlook on life. That's why I've decided to be more mindful of the stuff I consume online. I make it an effort to, you know, avoid engagement bait and to focus on content that is informative and uplifting and inspiring. So I do stay away from the Jordan LeBron bait. You know, I get into those so often I just have to find myself, uh, you know, finding something that's a little bit better to talk about. I encourage you to do the same. Let's be more critical of the content we consume and choose to engage in content that makes us feel good or helps us grow as individuals. What is your wife's expectation? I don't know. My wife's expectation? Yes. My wife's expectation was to give me children, take good care of my children, and to obey. That's the expectation. Okay, well, I would obey my partner for sure. The children part, I'm not looking to have children anytime soon. But when you say obey, what do you mean by that? Like to be respectful and to be submissive yeah, that's, to your that's, man. That's, respect and submission is different than obey. What do you What's your mean definition? by Well, obeyance is when I say to do something, you do it. And if I make a decision that you disagree with, ultimately I have the final say, and you don't have one. Oh, then your wife has to abide by that? Yeah. Why oh, doesn't I she have a final say? Why would she? 
Well, does she not offer anything to you that sure. would allow but if her it's, to have if, But it's up to my choosing whether or not I intake that and agree with it or disagree with it. But ultimately, if I disagree with it, it's my decision. So you're the one with the gavel. A gavel? <laughs> <laughs> the judge? No, no. It's in a Christian marriage. Man's ahead of the household. Okay. I really like the guy. I more just wanted to see if I could break his heart. So girls say stuff like this, and then they just wonder why men these days are suspicious and take a while to open up and maybe don't trust women. Oh my God, it's almost like that's the goal of this podcast. Of course, they're gonna find the most shallow, vapid women, put them in the room and then wait for them to say something vile. It's by design and you people know this. The woman who said that is just not a good person. It has nothing to do with her being a woman. If you want respect, you have to give respect back. It goes both ways. Yes, it goes both ways. Thank you for saying that. Just like how there's men on this same podcast saying some truly disgusting things equivalent to what this woman said. But no, could never post those clips because, oh right, predominantly conservative male audience. Now, back to Rage Bait. It's a phenomenon that is observed in the online realm. It's a form of content strategically crafted to invoke intense emotional responses particularly anger. Unlike clickbait, which aims to primarily boost user engagement by enticing headlines, rage bait isn't just about getting people curious. It's about trying to make them feel super strong emotions. Its perfect extends beyond generating clicks. It seeks to incite and heighten levels of enrage that individuals feel compelled to express their opinions by commenting and sharing the content to their address networks. Rage bait is a form of content that takes advantage of these negative biases. It is designed to invoke strong emotions, particularly anger, outrage, or fear, in order to capture attention and generate engagement. Engagement. Rage bait often relies on sensationalized headlines, shocking images, or provocative statements that are intended to trigger an immediate emotional response. Sort of like, like I said, something what you might hear about today is Caitlin Clark versus Angel Reese. Stuff like that. It's just stuff that tries to get you to get really strong opinions on stuff like that. Do y'all want to know what is worse than my Tahoe payment? You guys thought that was bad. Wait till you hear this one. It's my husband's truck. My husband drives a 2020 GMC 84 Sierra 1500. We bought it in August of 2022. Financed it for $78,000. He still has a remaining balance of, I think it's 72 or $74,000. I haven't really checked recently. His payments are $1,600 a month. So y'all thought my $1,400 Tahoe payment was bad. His truck payment is $1,600 a month with an APR of 14%. So yeah, y'all stop coming after me for my bad finance decisions and go after him because he fucked up too. Too bad he didn't buy his truck for him. I did. <laughs> so yeah, I messed them both up. Oops. So maybe we should just let his truck get repossessed and keep the Tahoe because a $1,400 Tahoe payment is a whole lot better than a $1,600 truck payment. Or maybe we should just let them both go back because we have the Audi now and don't need either of the car payments. So why does Rage Bait work? Well, human psychology plays a significant role in the way we process and respond to information. One prominent aspect of human psychology is the negativity bias. This bias refers to the tendency for negative information to have a stronger impact on our emotions and memory than positive information. This means that we tend to give more attention and weight to bad news, strong emotions, and negative events compared to positive ones, such as when we get bad comments on a YouTube video. As we proceed in our analysis of these videos, we observe that individuals have astutely recognized the correlation between heightened emotions and increased engagement which ultimately translate into financial gain. One must exercise conscious when succumbing to temptation of resorting to anger too hastily when provoked by others. Such a response can lead to a cycle of hasteful observation, whereby individuals engage in watching those they dislike solely to elicit the emotion of rage to which they had become accustomed. This phenomenon is akin to a child participating in an online game and expressing hatred as a mean of releasing stress accumulated during the day. I want to say that you have to be very careful to always trying to use anger as an outlet of stress when playing video games. I would say I prefer to use my anger more in the weight room or something like that, but I'm just saying be careful when you're always trying to get out anger and putting on someone else in a video game or something like that. Now the effectiveness of rage bait lies in the ability to tap into our paramount instinct and bypass our critical thinking. When we encounter rage bait, our brains may release stress hormones such as cortisol and adrenaline. 
which can heighten our emotional responses and make us more likely to react impulsively. This is because our brains are wired to prioritize threats and negative stimuli as a means of, you know, self-preservation. Now, the big thing about this is that whenever you do respond to these uh, rage baits, things that come along, you just got to be careful in how you respond, because that's the whole point. You're simply being baited into saying something foolish. Now, it is important to recognize that rage bait often manipulates our emotions to serve the interests of those who create and distribute it. Rage bait can be used to spread misinformation, divide people, or generate clicks. I injured myself trying to cut fries, so someone else had to do it. I was going to originally let this play by itself, but because you guys might not be able to see the video, I'm going to explain what's happening. So, she's taking two big patties, and she's going to be putting them into a pan. Now, for the rage bait part of it, she ends up getting all of this seasoning, and then over seasoning the meat. Now, she probably does not normally do this, but because she knows she's on camera, and she knows people are going to get upset, she over seasons the meat in a dirty pan, it looks like. And she's just trying to get people to engage. Don't fall for this nonsense. She also ends up getting some fries and putting them into a greased, greased, greased pan. Right? It looks like it was boiled in grease itself or fried in grease. And so she's just trying to make people get upset and be very, very engaging with her content. This is how they do it, people. Now she flipped the patties over and she's over seasoning them again. A lot of sodium for these two children now it says cook dinner with me but we're assuming that she's also making this for her kids now the meat has been completely burned and she's trying to make it seem like she doesn't know what she's doing and she might not know what she's doing however once again this is all for rage bait she puts two more patties on the pan and she over seasons those patties you can hear that bad boy sizzling so you know she's cooking it maybe just a tad bit too high and now she's getting the fries out of this dirty dirty pot and putting it in a bowl for her children or for herself and she's just throwing the fries into the grease where it's almost like burning her now she's putting shredded cheese on top of the meat not even really letting it melt she just put some random shredded cheese on top of this burnt hamburger meat and she puts more patties on the pan and over seasons them again so you kind of get the gist of what's going on here all rage bait all for you to want to be like oh my god you're so unhealthy oh my god you need to do better for your kids remember guys she might she might feed this to your kids she might not this is all just to get you to be engaged now let's get back to the script it can also contribute to a climate of negativity and polarization in society to counteract the effects of rage bait it is essential to cultivate critical thinking skills and be mindful of all our emotional reactions to online content we should evaluate information critically before sharing or reacting to it and be aware of the potential biases and motivations behind the rage bait so when you're reading these comments and things like this just know that these videos are simply just to get you to do that Take a break before you do any commenting, before you even think about it in your head. Take a second to be like, is this real content that has real discussion or is this content simply to make me mad? And by doing so, we can make more informed decisions about how we engage with online content and avoid being manipulated by rage bait. Now, TikTok has algorithms just like every other social media platform, and they're designed to promote what drives interaction. Regardless of whether that interaction is positive or negative, rage fuels comments, shares, and even angry downvotes, which the algorithm still sees as engagement. Now, this can create echo chambers. These are online spaces that tend to group like-minded people together, reinforcing biases and validating outrage. When surrounded only by people who agree, extreme views can be seen as reasonable. This is why it's always important to make sure that even if you have a disagreeing view, listen and have conversations with people that you don't agree with. This will allow you to be at least a little bit more open minded and not allow you to fall into these extreme views, which only cause more rage. Would you women date a man that's a addict that's watching every single day? And if it's of me. You can so not that. if he's jerking off to other girls? Me with other girls is cool. Like if he's addicted? He does it every day. 
I think most men watch day. almost every day. Am I wrong? Yeah, it depends on yeah. if it gets in the way of Unfortunately, probably, yeah. <laughs> I do yeah, it, it's I human nature to be attracted to more than one person, even though they're in a relationship, but it comes down to the commitment oh, within the relationship. I think it's probably not human nature to well, jerk off you're... while staring at a phone screen two okay. or three times a day, well, every single day, and I have no based. normal sexual intimacy with real-life human females. Rage bait thrives on the tendency of people to seek out information that confirms their existing beliefs, leading to echo chambers where individuals are surrounded by like-minded others. This can result in a hardening of attitudes, making it difficult to engage in civil discourse and find common ground with those who hold different views. It's the whole us versus them mentality, which is fueled by rage bait and it erodes trust and cooperation, making it harder to address societal changes. Now this can often lead to misinformation. Rage bait often relies on misinformation to elicit strong emotional reactions. Misinformation is particularly dangerous when it is presented in a way that appears credible and appeals to people's fears, biases, or prejudices. It was so weird. On the app you could literally see the car and what street it's on and you can watch it move. It was... Me and Becky were like, what the... Three boxes. I only ordered two things. So I don't know what this is. Okay. So I ordered crab rangoon. So confused why I got. And then I ordered some fried rice. This is what a fried Oreo looks like if anyone's been curious. Because I have never heard of a fried Oreo in my life. What? Oh my gosh. And it comes with some like chocolate sauce and some white sauce. You excited, babe? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely different, see? So I've always lived in places where like Uber doesn't happen there, Uber Eats doesn't happen there, Postmates don't happen there, but I just realized, this is probably a good thing I just realized this, Uber Eats works here and I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. Like I feel like I'm actually part of like true technology. So I just ordered something from a place I've never had. When people before. are in an emotional state, they are more likely to accept and share misinformation without critically evaluating its veracity. Misinformation can have serious consequences such as undermining public trust in institutions, spreading health misinformation, and inciting violence. Constant exposure to negative and outrageous content can desensitize people to the real issues and make them more cynical. When people are constantly bombarded with extreme and emotionally charged information, they become numb to the suffering of others and lose the ability to empathize. This desensitization can have a corrosive effect on society, making it more difficult to address important issues and build a just and compassionate world. It had 1.5 million views, a couple thousand angry comments, and not a single one mentions Veblenesque Gorge. I'm an inquisitive person, so when I took my daughter to Sephora, I looked at it as a bit of a social experiment. She's six, and I wanted to see if she would gravitate towards the drunk elephant products like all of the other Sephora 10 year olds right now, or if she would just go for lip glosses and face masks. And the response to that video has been insane. I'm so disappointed in people. If you had a choice between two minutes getting anything you wanted or 10 items, which would you choose? Two minutes. Okay, let's go. go. This was a bit of a social experiment. I wanted to see if she would engage in a Veblen gorge and purchase Drunk Elephant and Glow Recipe because of the colorful packaging. Mm. Grace is only six, so I don't let her watch social media. She does not have her own accounts, and I have no intention to let her be on social media until she's at least 15 or 16. But I was really curious as a marketing girly if these kids are flocking towards these specific products in drones because of how they look, or if it's because of cultural influences and the social validation they get from using them. In two minutes, Grace only picked out four products, a Charlotte Tilbury highlighter, NARS lipstick, a lip gloss that smelled like watermelon and something else. And I was a bit disappointed, so I actually let her spend more time shopping. And I was not surprised that she did not gravitate towards the drunk elephant. I actually had to steer her in that direction. We did get a glow recipe moisturizer, but she just wanted face masks and lip gloss. The four items she picked during her two minute shopping spree came to 142.51. Mm -hmm. And then when I let her keep shopping, she spent an additional 248.86. Being trapped in a cycle of anger and outrage can have a significant impact on mental health. Constant exposure to negative content can lead to anxiety, depression, and other mental health issues. The emotional toll of consuming rage bait can also make it difficult to focus, concentrate, 
and maintain healthy relationships. People seem to be more concerned with the fact that I'm letting my daughter wear lip gloss as if all girls aren't interested in nail polish and lip gloss at that age. Well, not all. It's unfair to generalize like that, but it's a normal thing for little girls to be into playing dress up and glitter and sparkles. And then there's this whole other camp of people criticizing how much money I allowed my daughter to spend. They seem to think that letting a kid wear lip gloss is okay as long as it's from Claire's or a drugstore. But if it is a Sephora lip gloss, then it is not. Maybe we should focus on the cost of the drunk elephant. I mentioned Veblen. I hashtagged conspicuous consumption. Not a single person picked up on that or commented on it. Everyone's too focused on the cost of the lip gloss. Veblen was an economist in olden times, interested in the intersection of economics, society, and culture, and how people purchase goods to signal their wealth. TikTok seems to have made people obsessed with Veblen goods. These are goods that contradict the laws of demand so that as the price increases, the demand increases, which is an inverse of a typical demand curve. 10 year olds are for the most part, not buying Hermes and Louis Vuitton. They are signaling wealth through Stanley Cups and Drunk Elephant. I said it was kind of like a social experiment. I didn't mean that I was actually experimenting on my child as if she's a lab rat. But as a mom of a little girl, I was curious if she would be interested in the colorful packaging of Drunk Elephant or if these 10 year olds want it because they see their friends with it on social media and it is how girls that age signal wealth. As I expected, the video and pseudo social experiment kind of demonstrated that it isn't necessarily Drunk Elephant or Sephora's marketing and the colorful packaging that's making these girlies want Drunk Elephant. It's the cultural influences, it's the influencers here on TikTok and it's the social validation they get from wealth signaling because for a 10 year old, they're not buying a $3,000 or a $10,000 handbag, but they can buy a $50 face cream and get on their socials and make a get ready with me video. Now here are some ways to help you with rage bait. First, you gotta start identifying rage bait in the misinformation to help combat its spread. Next, you need to learn how to critically evaluate information before sharing it to help reduce the spread of misinformation. Now, you also need to learn how to start practicing techniques such as mindfulness and meditation, and that can help you manage your emotions to avoid being manipulated by rage bait. Now, here's some things I think we could also do just as a society and maybe as a social media platform in whole. Some experts have suggested that social media platforms should implement stricter regulations to combat the spread of rage bait and misinformation. And we got to watch this engagement of it. Engaging in civil discourse and seeking out diverse perspectives can help broaden people's understandings and reduce polarization. We have to continue to have civil discourse. Before interacting with a TikTok video, it is crucial to approach it with a critical mindset rather than forming opinions solely for the purpose of validation. One must recognize that the primary objective of such content is to elect engagement often through sensationalized or emotionally charged material with the potential for monetization. It is essential to be mindful of this fact and to engage with the content critically, considering the veracity in the information presented and the intent behind its creation. It's just guaranteed that people are going to comment, stitch, and talk about that person. A great example of a rage baiter in my mind is Christian Walker. And the reason he is such a good example is we have seen him switch sides, switch, totally switch opinions because he saw there was more money in the other side that he was against before. So for instance, before he was all about women need to stay in the kitchen, women don't shouldn't have rights, blah, 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 blah. Now he's seen that, oh, women engage way more when I'm on their side. He just happened to post a video about being pro women, essentially, kind of. Saw how much engagement and views and stitches he got. So he switched sides. And now he's totally pro women, pro single women, screw men. It's a total grift, but unfortunately, a lot of people don't see it for what it is. So please know by approaching TikTok with a critical mindset and considering the intent behind their creation, users can engage with the platform in a more informed and responsible manner, fostering a healthier and more intellectually stimulating online environment. I'm glad you guys enjoyed. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed. If you didn't, that's fine. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.